Hello, Internet humans, and welcome to another episode of Regular Houdini with your host, me. Today we're going to look into a little-known corner of the Houdini-verse, and no, it's not some sexy simulation technique about inflating AI balloons before setting them on fire in anime style or whatever you nerds are up to out there. No. This course is about fundamentals. We're going to look at group syntax, which is essentially a way to utilize the power of groups without having to actually go through the hassle of creating one. It's useful for times when you only need a little selection temporarily. This can save you lots of time and effort, even while you're working on your melting sand grain magic blasts or whatever it is that's cool now. Ever wonder what's up with this group field sitting at the top of a ton of Houdini nodes? Well, this is where group syntax lives. It's actually documented in the Houdini docs. You can see all the functions here, so bookmark this page, or just Google Houdini group syntax and scroll to the bottom, that's what I do. Now, why would you want to use group syntax instead of creating a group? Well, because sometimes you don't need a full group so much as you just need a selection. Just a quick selection to do one operation on and then you don't need it anymore. In situations like this, groups are kind of overkill. First, you need to make the group, then you run the operation, let's say you want to blast some points, and then you need to delete the group because it will, be, it will still exist, it will just be empty. This is messy, it's a waste of space in your network, and not to mention your time. So let's run through some of these options here and look at examples of what these little puppies can do. Alrighty, first up is the asterisk, the star, the wild card. You may already know about this one, this one says select everything. Whether it be points, primitives, edges, whatever you want. One star. You can dial this in too. If you notice in the manual here, there are actually two entries for the asterisk. The second one is this cryptic question mark. What's up with that? Question mark here actually represents any string pattern. So imagine you have some complex geo coming in like, oh, I don't know, Craig? Craig has a name attribute that describes what part of his body is what, which is fairly common, even if the names are less helpful like box one or tube 666, which is some crap you usually get with random internet models. This still works the same way. So let's say you only want to grab Craig's abdomen. I know I do. So to do that, you can drop down a group from name SOP, which is a handy node that will convert the name attribute into a corresponding group. And now we can just type abdomen star, and we will get all groups that started with the characters before the asterisk. And by the same token, terrible pun intended, I'm so sorry, we can get this whole right side now by typing right star or even ri star, or even r star. But now it's getting dangerous because something else could easily start with r that we don't want. But you get the point. There's actually an even faster way to do this without creating the group from names SOP, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The opposite of the star is the exclamation point. This one means none, or opposite of. So if for some bizarre reason you want to select nothing at all, you can say exclamation point asterisk, which basically says to Houdini, select the opposite of everything, which is almost poetic, really. Anyway, you can also make this more directed as well. So let's say you want to operate on all points except for points 10 to 20. Well, you can just type exclamation point 10 dash 20. Or if you want to use the example from before, except you want to grab everything except Craig's right side, you can type exclamation point right star. Basically using the same logic as with the asterisk, except the inverse. Similar to this, but different, is the caret, which removes something from a selection. This one's a bit tricky to wrap your head around, and a lot of times the caret and the exclamation point are interchangeable. For instance, if we unpack Craig here, we can get a look at all of his attributes. Let's drop down an attribute delete node. And let's say we want to clear out every attribute except N and UV, which is a fairly common task. So we can type star space caret N space caret UV, which means select everything for deletion, that's the star, but remove N and UV from that selection. Now, in this case, we can also just type exclamation point N and exclamation point UV, and we can clear house that way. However, if you're getting into doing something super specific, and let's go back to Pat Craig here, you might find you need the subtlety of the carrot versus the full-blown nuclear blast of the exclamation point. Let's say we want to delete all of Craig's left side except for his left calf. 
So type in left star space caret left calf and you get the expected result. However, if we try this with the exclamation point, it completely breaks. Like I said, it's a bit tricky to grasp, so my advice when starting out is that if one doesn't work for you, try the other. And if neither of them work, that's probably on you. No offense. All right, moving on. Here are the obvious ones. Calling out specific point prim edge numbers or specific group names. Fairly self-explanatory, you just type what you want. You can select ranges, as I showed a second ago, by hyphenating, pretty simple. Or you can select individuals by just putting a space between. You can also select multiple ranges by saying 10 to 20, space, 30 to 40, and that'll get you those two ranges. There's actually a cool feature in here where you can iterate through elements, which is a great time saver as opposed to creating a full-blown group with the group by range node, which is what most people go for. So if you want to iterate through prims 0 to 10,000, Craig has a lot of prims, he can take it, but only grab every other prim, you can just type it 0-10,000 colon 2 into a blast stop here and tick delete non-selected, and now you're only getting every second prim. If you want the odd numbers instead, just start it from 1 instead of 0. If you want a quick way to iterate through the points of Geo without having to know how many points or prims there are every time, we can use this handy expression and our good friend, the backtick, who you may recognize from the previous video in this series. All you have to do is type this expression, followed by a 2 or a 3, or whatever you want to iterate by. The nprims function here grabs the total number of prims coming in from input 0, which is just a shorthand for the current geometry coming in. Now if your geo has 100 prims, this will return a value of 100. However, your actual prim numbers will only go up to 99 because it starts at 0, so we just have to subtract 1 to correct that. There's a version of this expression for points too. Here's an expression, here's an example using a poly bevel where we just want to grab every fourth point to bevel them. Now you can just do all of that in one single node, no need to create a formal group. Another common use case I can think of for this functionality is when you only want to grab the first and last point on a line. This is something you need to do constantly in procedural modeling for a number of reasons. To do that, we can just repurpose that expression from a second ago and put this into the group field. This will grab point zero, which is always the first point, and the number of points minus one, which is always the last point. Notice that there's no hyphen here, so it's not running through all the points. It's just grabbing the two that we specified, separated by a space. This is so much faster with, than with the group by range node, where you have to go in and basically trick it into doing what you want. Using that method, you drop down a group by range, set the beginning to one, set the end to one, then invert the selection. It's confusing. And then on top of that, you have this whole group sitting around that you probably no longer need, and now you need to delete it. So many clicks. There's also a keep variation of this functionality, which is pretty cool too. Let's create a line here to make this more obvious and increase the number of points to 50. Let's drop in a blast node, set to points, and we'll drop in our iteration expression, and we can see that point zero is being deleted, followed by every fifth point afterward. Now let's watch what happens when we add this to the code. Two and a comma, no spaces between these. Weird. Now we're deleting two points every fifth point. If we increase the three, now we're deleting three points. If we increase the four, now you basically have the inverse of the original selection. Full disclosure, I have never used this. I didn't even know it existed until I made this tutorial, but hey, one day, just maybe this will be exactly what I need. You know what, if you end up using this in a setup, drop a comment below and I'll give you a virtual high five. All right, friends, don't worry, we're just about done here. Last, but certainly not least, we have attribute matching. This one lets you check the value of any attribute on the geo without having to use any point or prim expressions at all. This is also super handy. In this little setup here, we have a bunch of instances with different colors and different positions in space. Let's say you only want to grab geo that has a color value in the red channel that's greater than 0.5. Simple. Just type in at cd dot r greater than 0.5 and that will grab them for you. You can stack these as well. If you want to grab the red objects that are only above the construction plane, you can just add at p dot y greater than zero. 
Something I personally do a lot when modeling is split up an object based on its normals. A lot of time you, you will need a box, but you don't need the top or you don't need the sides for whatever reason. Let's say you want to make a crate and separate the lid. So drop down a normal sop and switch the normals to be on the primitive level. Then change the name to prim n for clarity. Now we can drop down a blast sop and in the group field just type in at prim n dot y equals one. And that will blast away the top because it's normal in the y direction is one. You can blast off the bottom too. You can actually just add multiple values to check for it separated by commas. So just add comma minus one to the pattern and bingo, no tops, no bottoms. This of course works for the sides using the Z, the front and the back and the X. I mentioned before that you could separate crag without an additional node and this is how you would do that. Just type at name equals and then try all the stuff we did from before. Should work just fine. One final note is that you can combine all of these techniques into a single group field, so you can mix and match for some selection madness. All right, that was a lot, but you made it. Class three is done. In class four, we're gonna look at some ways of handling more complex operations in VEX. Don't be scared, it's gonna be okay. We're also gonna look at the differences between VEX scripting and channel expressions and when it might make sense to use one over the other. Excited? I'm excited. See you on the other side.